join us. Circle the globe. The planet is your hunting paradise. And one man will show you the world as you've never seen it before. Danger won't stop him. Nature won't break him or prevent him from doing the impossible. Hunting the Earth with bow and arrow. Be there to share this adventure. The ultimate journey for the ultimate shot. In today's episode of The Ultimate Shot, we are taking you hunting for subspecies of big game that only exist because of the conservation and preservation initiatives of hunters like you and me. Animals that were almost extinct in their indigenous homelands were introduced to favorable habitat around the world and thrived. The first species that we are after is the Himalayan tar. You are going with us to the forested mountain regions along the western border of Hungary in Eastern Europe, where the tar was introduced several decades ago during the communist regime. Then, its hunting was a privilege for a very few top politicians. Now Hungary is famous for its record class trophies. The Himalayan tar has been successfully introduced into different areas of the globe such as New Zealand, New Mexico, Texas, California, Ontario, and even South Africa. Its native habitat is in the rugged wooded hills and mountain slopes of the Himalayan mountains in Asia, from northern Kashmir to China. If we are successful and harvest a good male tar specimen here in Hungary, it will be the first trophy registered in SCI and the first trophy acquired with a bow and arrow. You can imagine how excited I was at the possibility of a world record on my first hunt in Hungary. We felt like pioneers, being the first to arrive in a new land, and the first to record and hunt a species of big game. We had the telltale proof of the tar's presence. Now, with the help of our local guides, we had to locate and outwit the animal. On our way through the woods, and being in this country for the very first time, we could not help but admire many magnificent examples of the European fauna. The thick dry cover had made it impossible to stalk the tar and get within range. The big male always sensed that we were getting close, jumped from its bed where it was invisible and disappeared in a couple of seconds into the thick cover. Obviously stalking and hunting on foot was not going to work. I had to try to set up for an ambush somewhere along one of the game paths. There were no stands or blinds and I needed to be standing to see the shot. So I sat up next to a tree to break up my outline and waited in silence and ready to draw. I sent my cameraman some 30 yards away in the clearing, just outside the edge of the forest, and told the other one to go even further. While he was walking away, an invisible tar jumped out right under his feet, and with a couple of big jumps, it was headed straight to Tony, who was hiding in the grass. The running animal literally jumped over the cameraman and was now coming in my direction. Oh God, he was running, but heck, still, I don't know. I mean, he came running through there like, how bent for leather, I don't know what it was. Anyway, I sure hit him. I'm sure I hit him. Did you see him? Yeah, you hit him. I hit him? Yes. You sure? Yes. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Well, he got running through here like 50 miles an hour, and he just turned just as I released my arrow, but he was only 15 yards. My God. And this is uh, this is the first one taken uh, with bow and arrow. For, for Safari Club members. Several rifle hunters. It's the first Himalayan tar ever taken by a bow hunter in Europe, and so uh, it's an introduced animal that uh, 
came here uh, several decades ago and, and now they're hunted as an introduced Safari Club International Lounge. Kind of everything. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With the uh, standard arrow we're using here in Hungary, and uh, we shot way out into that field there, which was a broccoli field or something. Anyway, we aimed at that building right over the trees and uh, aimed about ele elevation for the sun, and uh, the arrow went 362 yards. So that's uh, both the trajectory of that arrow with our. 70 pound bow, 362 yards. Fantastic. Yeah. In the next segment of the ultimate shot, you will see how the hunters in Bulgaria celebrate a successful hunt of for trophy mufalon. As with their Hungarian colleagues, the communist party leaders from the ex-communist bloc introduced and re-established many wild species they succeeded with some, and with others they did not. The mufalon that were released in the forests of the Balkan Mountains quickly acclimatized and their populations increased dramatically. Nowadays, hunters can see herds of 10 to 15 animals, many with old trophy class rams. Here the mufalon are usually hunted from well-constructed traditional stands. These wooden huts raised some 15 to 20 feet above the ground are located in prime feeding areas or travel routes. During their mating season, the rutting deer were a spectacular sight. Usually the stands are secluded and in the high mountains, which means an hour or two climb to reach them. A hunter can often see many of the species of animals that inhabit this mountain wilderness. The guttural roars of the red deer and fallow deer echoed throughout the forest. There isn't a hunter in the world who would remain calm and composed at the sight of these regal animals. The high mountain clearings, overgrown with ferns, are a favorite spot for the mufalon sheep. The hunters stalk these areas looking for a male with full curl horns. Before long, two mufalon come cautiously out of the timber. One of them was a remarkable trophy, horns of about 36 inches in length. A quick assessment of the trophy by the guide ensures that the hunter will take an old animal, well past its prime, as the dominant male in the herd. This was a remarkable trophy indeed. The old growth rings of the horns showed evidence of years of battles for supremacy and breeding rights. At the lodge, at the foot of the mountain, the hunter's friends were excited about the prospects of getting the same class of trophies. Soon, the hunting guys headed out with the new crew on their way to the stands. The exciting encounters with wildlife and the beauty of nature attract not only hunters to the forest and mountains. Although the stands are quite soundproof, they could not eliminate the sounds of excited people who came to the forest for adventure. The hunter was forced to react quickly. He had one opportunity for this animal as it disappeared among the thick high ferns. An extremely difficult shot, worthy of the ultimate shot. <laughs> Good job. The excellent marksman brought Dave a very beautiful trophy and the fame of being an excellent shot. The third hunter in the group had a harder hunt as he had to stalk the wary animals on foot.
a search started in the cover of the forest of beech trees, where the animals sought shelter from the early morning dew and dampness. With the sun's first rays, the forest dwellers started moving, and soon the forest became alive. Later in the day, the mufalon prefer the tall ferns of the high mountain slopes. Almost invisible among the tall vegetation, the animals felt well protected, and they rarely leave the comfort and security of this habitat, even when threatened with danger. The mufalon prefer to bed among the ferns rather than run and escape. This method of self-defense might work for a novice hunter, but not for the experienced guides who have studied and experienced this behavior. Eighty-five, eighty-six, maybe. Gold medal. The autumn rains and thunderstorms are the preludes to the coming of winter. After the pouring rain, the forest was filled with the aroma and fresh smells of nature's flora. For the hunter, just being there was a cocktail of sounds and colors which returned you to the unique and primal feeling of really being alive. From what is sometimes a purely mechanical pursuit of game, hunting turns into a reunion with nature, something very precious in our average day lives of high-speed traffic and jammed city streets. Soon the sun's rays warmed up the moist air and ground and the animals started moving. After the fairly relaxed mufalon hunting, we will show you one of the harder hunts for a species of animal which is not that common in the Balkan Peninsula, the alpine ibex. In the 1980s, several pairs were introduced into Bulgaria around the Musala and Batev mountain peaks from the Swiss Alps and their native homeland. They quickly adapted to their new homes and had an amazing increase in population. A count revealed that there were some 80 animals. The Alpine Ibex is a very special hunting trophy. In addition to that, its meat is extremely tasty. And historically, the local people have used parts of the Ibex body in preparing remedies and magical potions. To find the Ibex, the hunting group had to make a difficult and dangerous climb to the highest points of the mountain peaks. The Ibex usually leave the rocks to go out to graze early in the morning and at dusk. But during the rest of the day, they lie hidden in the rocks and crevices, high on the mountain, where from their vantage points, they have great visibility of the surrounding areas. They feed on high mountain grass, bushes, mushrooms, and roots. The mature billies fight for the right to have a harem, 
rearing up on their back legs and lunging forward. This unusual way of fighting is required because of the limited open space that the adversaries have at their disposal, and therefore the lack of opportunity to run at their opponent before making impact. The young specimen which the hunters encountered on the way to the top of the mountain meant only one thing, a secure population and future hunting opportunities. Now they just had to find a big old male, a hard task in the enormous area inhabited by alpine ibex. The only chance was to stalk the animal at one of the high mountain basins where the ibex drank water every two or three days. The chances were not great, but sometimes the fewer the chances, the greater the value of the trophy. Hopes were high after seeing the fresh tracks, and the group continued the difficult climb along the mountain ridge. Here at the top, over 6,000 feet high, only eagles live. From the rocky peak, there was a wonderful view of the surrounding mountain slopes and the valleys below. Lady Luck loves the brave and the persistent. This was a very old ibex with an incredible set of trophy horns. The only problem was that this was such a long shot, the compensation and vertical adjustment due to the steep incline now needed to be taken into account. Will the hunter manage to make the right judgment and adjustment? Scared, possibly by the eagle's cry, the ibex started going down, headed for cover and the protection of the forest. With the movement and with every yard downwards and further away, the hunter's job became more and more complex and difficult. If he succeeded in hitting the animal, this would indeed be the ultimate shot. After the successful shot, a most difficult job was still left for the hunter, to retrieve the trophy and the meat from the deep ravine into which it had fallen. Otto had said, "Hast du Kamera aus?" Ah, here. Ah, Stefan. Right one, Stefan. After this amazing rifle shot, we will show you another special example of shooting, this time with a bow. This just eats through you, this weather. Raining and snowing and coming from 40 degrees Celsius to minus 10. This is just a beautiful part of the world. And uh, we've got Mufalon here in front of us. Inside. Just beautiful country. The leaves are turning. And winter's coming. I guess I hit him, did I? That was a tough shot. It was uh, just over 70 yards. Tough position, but uh, in the eastern Balkan Mountains, we came here to hunt a specific fallow deer that they knew was on this mountain. 
and we hunted that deer earlier this morning out of our Ameristep pop-up blind. We took a drive around, we're waiting to go in to look for that fallow deer, and we spotted this great old Mufalon ram. He's heavily broomed, horns are really broken. He turned broadside and gave us a tremendous shooting opportunity. We decided to take it, even if I missed. And we got a great trophy. This is a more than full curl, heavy broomed ram. Very old, his horns are all broken. Just a tremendous trophy here. It's, it's all free range, it's just beautiful country. The, the streams, the mountains, the autumn colors. The sun's out here now and it's just a beautiful place to be. In our next episode of The Ultimate Shot, prepare yourselves to participate in the most dangerous hunt in the world. Under the hot African sun, we will track down, and then we will be tracked down. We will hunt, and we will be the hunted when we stumble upon a pride of lions. We shall learn more about man-eating lions and eliminate one that has taken the dark path to its end. We will see a real white lion and find out why the local Africans revere this animal. Finally, prepare yourselves to feel the adrenaline rush experienced by hunters when a predator jumps at them and only two seconds separate them from certain death. Soon on The Ultimate Shot.